Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the vertical stabilizer. So the rudder is your most inexpensive part and your easiest part to assemble. This is the second least um, costly part or assembly. I would say this is probably between the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer. Uh, vertical stabilizer is a little more difficult because you got a curving surface around the ribs to form an airfoil. You got the angled uh, front end, leading edge of the vertical stabilizer. So you got a couple different, you got the, the center of the of the ribs kind of have an airfoil shape. You got some differing changing angles. So it, it does uh, lend a little bit, uh, a little bit tougher to get everything lined up. The only thing about the horizontal stabilizer, it is easier per se. There's just more parts. So you gotta be more careful and know that you're using the right parts when you're assembling it. So I would say um, tackle the rudder first. The next step would be to um, build the vertical stabilizer. And you can kind of see some of these parts I primed. I primed the surfaces that are laying flat against each other, doublers, um, both on the front spar and rear spar, and then the pull handle doubler on the skin. So the, and then also the hinges here. I, uh, I primed the hinges. So all I've been using is just a Rust-Oleum self-etching primer from Home Depot. It's kind of a grayish green depending on the light. Fairly inexpensive. Um, it's not very durable. You gotta wait probably at least a day. I mean, if you start assembling after, you know, five hours of letting it dry, it's, it's still got a little bit of weakness and scratches. And you can see that some of the parts have uh, metal showing through. So, um, and I'm mainly concerned about the part, the surfaces that are mated together. You can't see if moisture gets in there, galvanic corrosion, if there's uh, steel touching the aluminum parts. The ribs and spar and skin I did not prime. Um, one thing about the vertical stabilizer is you use these tooling holes on the bottom rib and then the tooling holes on the top rib and I have photos of that. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of angle and laid it across. First I Clico holes here in here, a Clico, and I lay the Clico, I lay the this across the Clicos, and then if this is level with the tip rib, then your surface is level. So you got to put it on uh, two by fours or your metal uh, blocks here. These are three by six aluminum uh, to get a flat surface. Shim till it is shim the the supports. And I also had some shims on these surfaces here that kind of um, go to a point. But um, once you level out this, either with a bubble level or electronic level, if you got one small enough, just remember um, if you have two levels, take them on a surface and make sure they match each other because you don't want one level that's slightly off causing you to have a twist. Another thing I saw in pictures of the, um, the factory, they had a basically a ratchet tie around here to pull this tip part tight. Um, the only thing that is drilled is this top skin. You have to drill through the main skin and the spar. So you gotta get all this lined up here and then this top skin overlaps or this nose skin. Make sure you get a good um, edge with your edge rolling tool so it, it lies really flat against that. And then also on your tip ribs and main ribs, more so on your tip ribs, make sure that the flanges, you kind of, before you put the skins on, kind of make sure that they line in, align in the plane. Um, I can see up in here, I don't think the camera's gonna get it, but I can see that second, this rivet especially, there's a little bit of, it pulls away a little bit. And these rivets aren't the best. Obviously, I've, I've um, gone along and gotten better, but um, definitely make sure the little tabs where the rivets, the holes for the rivets on the ribs, 
kind of bend them up a little bit so they meet the skin because if they fall below the skin either get a dent or your rivet doesn't pull quite right another thing when you're doing your pull handle for your tail wheel tail dragger pull handle i would uh wait until you're drill your holes in the skin you drill a i can't remember the sizes but the this main skin is a little bit bigger because there's an inner tube that fits to this outer tube that's um uses epoxy to glue it together jb weld I definitely suggest before you start messing with these tubes and getting them to the right size and you have to file them down that you rivet the rest of everything because you can get get this to the point where you can rivet the skin because what I found is having Clecos, I did it before I riveted and all these Clecos everywhere caused kind of a pain in the butt to flip it over and get the left and right side of the pull handle even because I was dealing with a bunch of Clecos and flipping it over onto my two by four uprights that kind of keep the Clecos off the table. So um, definitely rivet, get it, get pretty far in the pool handle. Don't, you don't need to quite, you don't need to rivet the doubler. You definitely need the holes in the, in the, um, the skin to match per the manual. But when you start filing down your tubes, I would definitely um, get it riveted and then stop. Don't rivet this part. Work work on your tubes. You can pull the tubes through and um, get them even and file down. And because this surface is not completely flat, your tube's gonna ha kind of have an angle at it. So as you index your tube around, you gotta really file slowly. I, I It took me, you know, over a couple sessions just to uh, get the tube to uh, match it's got a little bit of a it protrudes a little bit per the plans but um, it ended up pretty pretty looking pretty good another thing when you're doing your hinges that's usually the, about the first thing you do is you um, rivet on your hinges with these large stainless steel rivets um, all the fixed surfaces horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer you see the flange points forward and then the, the hinge is riveted onto the back on the moving surfaces like the rudder and elevator, the flange points towards the, fr the front still, but obviously the hinge is on the other side. So the, that you, you gotta make sure you're riveting the right, correct side. Cause I, on my elevator, I ended up riveting two hinges to the wrong side and had to buy a new spar. But overall, I think the vertical turned out well. Um, one thing I do notice is you do get kind of, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but there's kind of a little bit skin kind of dimples in a little bit every so slightly on some of the holes. Um, I found if you try to keep the, the rib flanges as high as, as the highest part of it, if you have to flute or something like that, like when you get to the wing ribs, you're gonna have to flute those, but, um, you don't get rid of these bubble, these dimples all the way, but you can minimize it. And it's just part of having an aluminum aircraft. And then um, one more thing is on your rivets. On some of the rivets, the callouts might be a little bit, little bit long. You get a little bit protruding mandrels out of a pooled rivet. Just take a little file or an emery board, like for uh, filing uh, like fingernails or something like that, and you can just ever so slightly file that mandrel down because they're aluminum just be real careful don't get on the top of the head of the rivet um, file it down so it doesn't have sharp edges on it and uh, for later for paint or i'm actually considering vinyl wrap so i want to make sure all my rivet heads are fairly smooth so the vinyl wrap will uh, conform around the rivet heads and then uh on the tips I, ha I haven't done any of my ABS tips yet. Probably gonna save that. Just kind of like do that in one large project between all of my surfaces. And then uh, do the ABS tips later. And then um, for the Rams S21, there is no uh, lighting. There's no lighting that goes on the top of the vertical. There's no lighting that goes at the back of the rudder. Like some aircraft have a, uh, or the back of the tail cone, they'll have a solid white or even a stro back there. Uh, it's fairly simple. No, the only wire you run is for your trim tab, for your electronic trim. 
and um, the lights on the wing they're far enough out you can have a rear facing white light on your wing and then the strobe on your wing will act as your recognition light so no need to run any type of uh, lighting at the rear end or the tail unless you want to so that is the vertical stabilizer put it up vertical it sets like that so lots of lots of area on the tail of this airplane got a long tail movement, movement moments and it's got a large lot of surface area so uh, definitely definitely have a lot of authority 